On the call this morning, the U.S. dollar remains weak after politicians cast a symbolic vote to not raise the debt ceiling. U.S. futures are flat ahead of an ADP job report despite positive guidance from Novellus. And gold and silver decline as more details on a possible Greek debt solution emerge. I'm Alex Steele, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Redlick, Chief Strategic Officer with T3Live.com. And I'm Alex Steele with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Scott, good to see you back. I hope you had a good long weekend. I know I did. Um, I want to start with the markets. Ended May with a bang yesterday. You said frisky. I said bang. <laughs> but what do we do now? We have the S&P seeing a four-day winning streak the first time in over a month. What's the direction? Well, the new direction, according to IBD, which we've been talking about, is now we're in a confirmed uptrend. The problem here is, or not even a problem, by the time we get into a new uptrend, the market's had to prove itself. So right now we're a tiny bit overbought, so we could see some sideways action. But overall, we've been seeing health. We talked about how the trend changed in the last two weeks where we saw the S&Ps groping mm -hmm. for that 100-day moving average. And in that time frame, a lot of the leaders were acting frisky. So with that said, it gave you an indication that you could be long some of the better acting stocks. And now the market followed through, so it gives you a little bit more confirmation or conviction to maybe hold a few more positions, maybe even hold it longer than just a trade. You mentioned confirmed uptrend. It was interesting though I was reading a technical report from Standard & Poor's last week that said that June could see a bit of a rally, but that come July they're still expecting at minimum that 10% correction. So how long do you think that this confirmed uptrend will really last? Well, once you're in a confirmed uptrend, what you don't want to see is distribution days. Okay. You don't want to see immediate selling. You want to see more accumulation. You want to see more updates like we had yesterday, but it might take a few days for that. What I want to show you is a chart of the S&P and show you what we're watching. As far as this huge move that started back in September, all the way to the highs when we killed Osama bin Laden, then we had this descending channel. We talked about how descending channels typically break to the upside, and that's exactly what we saw yesterday. But we were up about four or five days leading into that. So this is a pretty nice move from about 1310 to almost 1345. So I'd like to see us hold, go sideways above this descending you know, trend line, and then continue. So today is probably not the day to go just chasing the markets because we just had four or five updates in right, a row. Right, right. But continue to monitor the action of the leaders. If we hold in here, look for relative strength. Look for more stocks to join the stronger groups to help maintain this move higher. Now, if you did buy in sort of mid to late March, oh, sorry, May, would you be selling into this at all, or you just want to hold and wait to add? Well, it depends what you're in. Depends mm -hmm. on if it's extended. Depends on where you got involved. It depends on what tier. If you were buying last week in anticipation because you saw the leaders acting well, and you added, you know, in the end of last week, maybe you sold a little bit yesterday, and then you want to wait to the, see the stocks prove themselves, see the market go sideways, and then re-add if you're trading for cash flow, 